going to rebuild this car, come back stronger. Welcome back to the channel. I finally, finally have some C6 Drift Corvette updates for you. Now, obviously for the past month, we've had to have 110% focus on our Dodge Lancer GT build solely. Now we're back and we can start moving on the C6. It actually kind of worked out because we were able to just send parts out that need to get rebuilt for the C6, waiting for more parts to come in. And now we're getting really, really close to our final rebuild for the car. But first, it has to be repainted pretty much completely. So here is the C6. All the body panels except for the hatch are currently off the car. Um, I got new front fenders from Carbon Creations. Also got a new hood from Carbon Creations that's here. So all that stuff needs to be prepped. And yes, I'm going to be repainting the entire car and this time doing the full fade completely on my own. The very first thing that needs to be painted so that we can start the assembly process is obviously our engine bay. Now this was really, really rough from all of the fire. It really compromised all the fiberglass. So this has had a lot of prep done to it. Randy went ahead and sprayed down a really thick acrylic primer previously in the spots that were the worst. And then today I'm going to be just stuffing over all of the existing primer, pushing the car back into the booth and painting it once again. I literally feel like we were just here and I was just in the paint booth with this car. I am keeping it neon yellow. I contemplated changing it because that's what I had before, but the only thing I'm gonna do differently is just add a lot more plate. It's still really humid this morning. It's Florida and it's gonna start raining in like five hours again. So managing the humidity is gonna be a bit tough in the booths. We don't have a heater that works, but we gotta get this done. Literally nothing else can be reassembled and start to put back into this car until the engine bay is painted. So finally, 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 we are back to work on the amazing C6 Corvette. I wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Raid. In the game, the Arbiter fought many bad guys a very long time ago, but wasn't strong enough to take them out completely. So instead, she built the Doom Tower. Fast forward to present day in the game, and now that tower is currently failing. And it is your job to try and take out as many of those bad guys as you can before it completely fails. To climb to the top, you're going to need an army of champions. The real fun is just trying different things out and experimenting yourself along the way. And this month, Ray just released a huge new feature called the Awakening and a new dungeon called the Iron Twins Fortress. If you're good enough to take down the Iron Twins, you'll be able to awaken your champions. This lets you choose a powerful blessing that can transform how your champions perform in battle. But here is the even bigger news. Raid has just released a super powered legendary version of everybody's favorite champion, Death Knight. All you have to do is log in and play Raid for seven straight days between now and October 27th. And you'll add the ultimate Death Knight to your collection. There's never been a better time to get started and you can use the promo code DKRISES for a bunch of free items to level up your champion. And if you haven't started playing Raid yet, just click the link in the description and you'll get even more awesome bonuses. You'll get free Epic Champion, Ina, 200k Silver, one Energy Refill, one XP Boost, and one Ancient Shard. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. Just click the link in the description and I will see you guys in game. officially back in the paint booth. I feel like we were just here again, but Chris is here with me today to help paint everything. I had him quickly prep the rear here. In case I ever don't have the rear bumper on, 
I need that to be neon yellow. I think the first time that I test this car after we did it back together, I'm not gonna have any of the fenders on. So we gotta have that painted. So we're gonna tape everything up. I'm gonna be painting the back of the car. And of course, repainting the entire front. Now we still have some fiberglass damage here that we tried to get as good as we could. This is as good as it's really gonna get. We don't have time to keep laying on this fancier acrylic primer on because it takes maybe four to five days to fully cure and that's with this baking out in the sun. So we just can't wait any longer and I gotta get this done. We gotta get the car back together. So car is in here, I'm gonna wipe it down tape everything up, and then start shooting. Of course, you guys know we're using the best paint in the game from House of Color. And if you remember my last video, you know the drill. So I'm gonna get all my paints out. I'm gonna be using a white sealer first, which is this one. And I'm gonna mix it so that it's a lot higher build than normal. I'll do one probably light coat, then a thick coat of this. Then I'll do white just as a foundation color. Then the most important color, you guys the neon chartreuse NE508, the best neon yellow in the entire world, is right here by House of Color. So after we have a white foundation, we'll go in with the neon, probably two really good coats of this. Then after that, I'm going to be using House of Color S200, the Trans Nebulae, because this is the carrier base for another very, very important part, boom our flake. This is the most fun. Okay, actually, between this and the neon, it's the most satisfying, most fun part of painting to me. And I'm gonna be going a lot harder this time with the flake. I'm hoping the flake will also help distract from any of the unevenness from the fiberglass damage previously. So, solution? more flake. Then finally, we're gonna go in with my favorite House of Color Clear, which is their US CO1 show clear. This looks so good and I'm probably gonna do two to three really thick, thick, thick coats. down fully taped off and Chris went and prepped this really quickly for me this is a radiator support it was never painted so I'm finally going to get that painted neon yellow as well so it blends in with everything here we go luckily the rain forecast is now pushed to not starting till this evening thank goodness because I was freaking out about having to rush wish me luck <laughs>
favorite time. It is officially neon time. Uh, I'll talk a little bit later about everything that's been going on. It's probably five, six hours later than the last video clip. I've been dealing with a lot, but it's working now and it's time for neon. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. Y'all, I actually did really good. Wow. I know my first time doing the bay, I think I had like a run or two that I was still able to sort of do my best to fix. But this time around, absolutely no runs. What the hell? Um, it looks really, really good. One of the times I came back here and was just, of course, starting to overdo it and look for all these different spots. I did spray it a little bit too heavy here. Might be hard to tell on camera, but it's a, a little more yellowy compared to everything else. That's when I told myself, you're done. I think with the flake and all the clear, you won't really tell, but boom, done. The back doesn't really matter as much. Like we didn't spend that much time prepping this. We just prepped it really quick, just stuffed it and decided to shoot it. This is only going to probably be seen maybe once when I drive the car for the first time with no fenders at all, which is why I wanted to spray it. So that's good. The radiator support bar turned out good as well. Yeah, y'all, we are now ready for another favorite thing of mine, and that is the flake. I'm really hoping the flake helps hide 
where the fiberglass is just damaged and uneven. So we're gonna go extra, extra heavy with the flake this time, mixing this into our trans nebulae. So I know some of you are probably thinking, um, that is not clear and it's supposed to look like this. It's kind of melty looking, but what this is actually gonna do is suspend our flake so that it's multi-dimensional versus normal clear, the flake will sink to the bottom. So the trans nebula is specifically made for dry flake and other pearl colors that have a lot of effect in it to specifically suspend that effect. And when it dries, it's not gonna be cloudy at all. One of the most annoying things that I've been dealing with all day has been the humidity level. And currently our heater for this booth that would pull out the humidity does not work. So I've been putting a dehumidifier in there and this is the third completely full one that I've dumped out. That's insane. Wow, I look messed up. It's currently four in the morning. The car is clear, it's done. I didn't film that because it usually gets really, really cloudy and you can't see much anyway. I ended up doing three really thick coats of the House of Color show clear. Uh, on my first one though, it was just sort of fish eyeing everywhere. And I feel like maybe I just had a little bit too much reducer with the conditions in here. So my first coat, I just feel like wasn't the best. Second coat, I actually didn't use any reducer. Uh, I just put like a splash in there to make myself feel better. But I used a lot less reducer on the second and third coat. And it ended up looking 10 times better. And I didn't have any of the issues that I had previously. I think it's fine. I mean, this is not a show car. If it was a show car, I would probably wet sand it and then shoot it a few more times. But it is good. I'm happy with it. It's four in the morning. I will show you guys the car later when it's in the sun. I'm gonna go sleep. Car done. Good. Oh. It's the next day and the car looks so good. It's wild because I was pretty much second guessing myself throughout most of the process as it's been so long since I've painted. But this is potentially one of the best paint jobs I might have done. I didn't mess up the neon yellow anywhere really. So there's no neon yellow runs, which would be the easiest to spot. At least from what I'm seeing, I don't think I have any runs in the clear. In the back, I do have some runs because I knew we're not ever gonna see, aside from maybe one time that I drive this car without a rear bumper on it. So at the very beginning, when I would start painting clear, I would start in the back. I would push the limits of how much I could lay on thick, watch what would happen, and then apply what I learned from the back to the engine bay. I think doing that definitely helped me a ton. A lot of the unevenness here is just from, from the prep. But I think I did pretty good. I had one run here on the bar, 
but I used the tape method and I used tape, got the run out, sanded it a little bit and it's done. So yeah, I was super stoked. I'm gonna untape the car and then see what it looks like. The Corvette is officially done. The clear has already been curing for a few days now. This is the last day that we're gonna just let it sit outside in the sun. Considering how bad the fiberglass was messed up and how badly everything was burned, I'm super stoked with how it came out. And I'm really, really glad that I ended up using like 10 times the amount of flake. But it is all set now. And this has honestly been the biggest holdup because until this was done, it couldn't, put everything back into it. So I have new front fenders for the car. I have new rear overs. And of course we have a new hood because if you remember the hood that was on it, well, that one's destroyed. It's completely melted. So carbon creation sent over new stuff for us. Our new hood is right here. It's so pretty. I absolutely love, love, love this style. So I'm glad they had another one ready to ship to me. And behind here, you can see our sad burned hood. And over here are all of our new fenders that are wrapped up. And I'm gonna keep them wrapped up until I go to prep them and repaint everything. Here's our top piece that's not gonna get repainted. I probably will end up repainting this. I'm telling myself now I'm not gonna repaint everything, but really the only way to properly redo a fade is to redo it all. Um, and this time I'm not gonna have House of Color here with me helping me for such a challenging paint job. So I will be fitting the Corvette again, this time all on my own, which I'm very excited for, but I'm also a little bit nervous. But now that the engine bay is done, that's huge. Nick is going to get the Corvette back together and start reassembling everything over the next week. And I'm actually gonna be gone over the next week. Hopefully the next Corvette update for you guys, the car is mostly back together. And we are really so, so close to getting that car running again. Thanks again to everyone for all the support and everyone just continuing to reach out about that car and get updates on it. Here's the update video for you. And hopefully we'll be shredding in the C6 very, very soon.